Hey there, my name is Terry with True Marie Soapworks, and today I'm going to show you how I made this bar. I've been having fun with my nine bar slab molds, and this is one of the designs I came up with. If you're interested in buying the recipe, I have that for sale on my website. If you're interested in free recipes, I have a lot of them with my older videos just in the description below, so take a look at that. This is a palm free vegan recipe. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I give tips throughout the video and especially at the end when I'm cutting my soap. In my next video, I'm planning on featuring some of your questions, so put them in the comments below and I'll pick a few of them and do my best to answer them. Okay, let's get started. First, measure one third to one half of your water weight in distilled water ice cubes. I use the ice cubes because it helps my lye water to cool down more quickly, but it also lowers the fumes because the fumes happen when the heating up happens. So this keeps the temperature down and I honestly don't smell anything when I use this method. Next measure the sodium hydroxide and then gradually pour that into the water and stir that until it's dissolved. And then measure your sodium lactate and set that aside with your lye water and let it cool in a place that's well ventilated and safe for many kids or pets. Sodium lactate is an optional ingredient. You don't need it, but it is a natural ingredient that helps your soap to last longer. It hardens your bar. And it also makes your bar less sticky and I like it because it makes your soap easier to get out of the mold. Before I measure the coconut oil, I make sure and note the weight of my bowl because I will need that later when I'm calculating the percent inches of my batter. Next, I microwave the coconut oil in short bursts. While I'm doing that, I start to measure my liquid oils, starting with my avocado oil, then my castor oil, and then finally my olive oil. Next, I measure the fragrance, and today I'm using Green Irish Tweed from Elements Bath & Body. This is one of my customers' favorite fragrances, and also I like it because it decelerates your batter, and you absolutely need a fragrance that behaves for this technique. Next, I measure the cocoa butter. If you don't have cocoa butter pastilles or wafers, you can totally use whatever you have. I just really like the convenience of the wafers or pastilles. Next, I measure the shea butter, and then I cut it up into smaller pieces so that it melts more easily. I'm using ultra-refined shea butter for this recipe because of the white color. The others are a little on the yellow side, and I wanted to use a pristine white color. After I'm done cutting up the shea butter, I go ahead and add that to the melted coconut oil. I stir it a little bit, then set it aside and let it melt on its own while I work on the colorants. I start off and measure the titanium dioxide. I have already dispersed this one part titanium dioxide to three parts of olive oil. Titanium dioxide is notorious for specks, so you have to take care and really get all of that out and get it dispersed completely. The next color I'm using is Black Onyx. It's from Elements Bath & Body. In fact, all of these colors are from Elements Bath & Body that I'm using today. I'm using this Black Onyx at a rate of 0.75 teaspoons per pound of oils. I mix my colorants on a sheet of plexiglass with a palette knife and a little olive oil. I only use as much oil as required to get that color dispersed well. The next color I'm using is Amethyst Mica. Here it says purple amethyst, but when you go to Elements Bath & Body's website to order it, it's under amethyst. I'm using it at a rate of 0.75 teaspoons per pound of oils. The next color I'm using is Brown Oxide. I'm using this to tone down that purple a little bit and make it more of a wine color. When all is said and done here, I ended up using a rate of 3 16 teaspoon per pound of oils and that works out to be 0.1875 teaspoon per pound of oils. I got tired of figuring out all of the math and I made up a spreadsheet and then Elements Bath & Body was kind enough to put that on the internet and make it usable there. So if you have any questions on it, I'm the one that did all the math for this and so if you don't understand it, I would be the one to ask. Just put questions down below in this video and I will get back to you. I'll leave a link in the description below to the colorant calculator and also to a video that explains how to use it.
For the last color, I'm using brown oxide again, but at a much lower rate. In fact, it doesn't really register as per pound of oils. I'm just using a 0.15 cc scoop, and then I'm going to adjust it later with a little bit of titanium dioxide. I'm going for that really light color, as you see in the color swatch there. Next, I'm just preparing my squeeze bottles. I'm using 12 ounce squeeze bottles. For the liners, I'm using those packaging pillows that you get in your shipments and just cut the top off and insert it with the back end of a chopstick. Now that the coconut oil and shea butter is melted, I just add the cocoa butter. I set that aside to melt while I'm incorporating the kaolin clay into the liquid oils. I'm using a rate of one teaspoon per pound of oils. I try to get that clay down under the surface of the oils before I turn on that mini mixer to incorporate it. Next I'm adding the fragrance to the oils. Keep in mind that I'm only doing this because I know this fragrance oil has a good reputation, it doesn't speed up, and it actually seems to slow down. So if you're using a fragrance that has a little bit of acceleration, I would not add your fragrance to the oils yet. I would wait until after you have everything split up and colored and then I would add it. Next I add the sodium lactate to the lye solution and then I add the liquid oils to the melted hard oils. In previous videos I said to make sure that your oils are clear. Here I have the clay in there already so the oils won't be clear. Just make sure that all your hard oils are melted because you could end up getting stearic spots in your final bar. It's perfectly fine to use but it's just a cosmetic thing and most soapers don't like that. I had to let my oils and my lye water sit for a little bit to let the temperatures come down. I like to soap between the temperatures of 85 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 29 to 35 degrees Celsius. Then I strain the lye water into the oils. Next, I have to figure out the weight of what's in the bowl. Since I already measured many things in different containers after I measured things in this container, I have to rely on that number I wrote down earlier on. I take the full weight of the bowl and the contents, and then I subtract the weight of that bowl, and then I'm left with the weight of what's in the bowl. And I just take that number and multiply it by the percentages you see here, and I get my answers of the divided soap weights. If you didn't notice, I zeroed the scale with the spatula on there, so that's not going to be in the calculations of what's in the bowl. You might think that those percentages are rather odd, but if you think about it this way, my nine bar slab mold will be divided into nine divisions. And of those divisions, four of the divisions will be the white color, and five of those divisions will be that wine color. Okay, so think of the white, that's 45% of my batter. But to get my smaller amount for my accent, I have to take that 45% and divide it up. So I take the 45 and I'm using 15% for that accent. So 45 times 15% is 7%, and then 45 times 85% is 38%. And the same thing for the other 55%. You take the 55% times 15% to get that accent, and then that's 8%. And then you take the 55% times the 85%, and you get 47%. Now that seems rather confusing, and I, I know I lost some of you there, but just know that there's a method to my madness. I just got this batter to an emulsion. That means that there's no trace, it's just emulsified. As you see, it's just sitting there and I'm stirring it and then I'll put the spatula down and stir it again. I'm seeing if it's going to stay emulsified and not separate. And I just pour off the four different percentages that I figured earlier. At this point, it's important to work fairly quickly. You have to treat this batter like it is going to thicken so that you can get it colored and get it into the mold before it thickens. So just treat it as if it's going to thicken and then if you need it to thicken up a little bit, you just let it sit and stir it every so often until it's the right consistency. The 47 and 8% batter will be the wine color and the light brown color, and the 38 and 7% will be the white and the dark gray.
to adjust the brown to make it that light brown that I'm looking for, I estimate that I added about a fourth of a teaspoon of dispersed titanium dioxide. At this point, my trace is almost at a medium trace, so I need to keep moving and get this in the mold. So for the small amounts, I put those in the squeeze bottles and I get ready to pour. I pulled the liner out and made that a little bit shorter so it would be easier to pour the whole amount of the batter into the mold. Okay, let me show you my mold. This is a homemade nine bar slab mold. You can get nine bar slab molds. I know Brambleberry has a silicone liner that's about the same size as the inner dimensions of this mold, but I'm thinking about doing a tutorial on how to make one out of a cardboard box. And I was wondering if you were interested in that. If you're interested, just put it in the comments below. When I start to pour, I just make sure that one hand is holding down the mold while the other hand pours, and I'm just trying to get enough soap batter in there to fill up the bottom so that when I release my hand, that soap is already in there and it's not going to seep underneath that divider. If you have a little seepage, it's fine, but I want to talk about the dividers too. I made these dividers using the same concept as I used in my video on how to make dividers, so if you're interested, check out that video. You don't need dividers for this particular design, but it really helps the design to get down to the bottom, at least the main colors. It's up to you. You can really do this design without them. I would invest in a sheet of that plastic and just save it for different dividers because it's just broadens your possibilities. I've put about half of my base colors in and now I go in with my squeeze bottles and add about half of my squeeze bottles and I'm trying to do some on the surface but break through some and get that color down a little bit further. Once I'm done with that, I go back in and pour out the rest of the base colors and repeat with the accents in the squeeze bottles. Next, it's time to remove the dividers. And then with my skewer and a really sturdy straight edge, I make lines up and they're all going in the same direction. And every time I make a line, I wipe off my skewer. For these, I have marked my lines. I'm a technical person and that helps me, but totally go ahead and wing it yourself. You don't need those lines at all. Then I turn the mold 90 degrees and I start to use my skewer to kind of break up these colors. I'm trying to get these vines to look like one side is budding and the other side is a leaf and I'm going back and forth this time. I take my skewer out in between each one and I clean it. I don't just go back and forth like you would in the Taiwan swirl where you go to one end and then go over a little bit and then go back to the other end and go over. That causes drag and it's better to pull that skewer out and then insert it back in again a little bit further down after you clean it. Thank you. 
Once I finished this, I covered my mold and I insulated it. And I'm not sure if it went through gel or not. It's kind of hard to get such a thin layer of soap to go through gel, but it doesn't really matter for this technique. Here's what the soap looks like the next day. I use my palette knife and I even out the edges that have crept up the sides of the liner. Next, I mark my slab to divide it into three parts. And if you're interested in why I'm slanting my ruler, I have a video on that and I'll give you a link below. Next, I just cut those where I made the marks and I get my three pieces. The cutter that I'm using is from Brambleberry. It's part of their wire soap slicer. The stand that I'm using as a guide, that's something we made at home. You can see that there's a tiny bit of soda ash on the top of these pieces, so I'm going to run them through the planer and get that off. I do that slanted ruler trick again and divide it this way by three. I make sure each of the bars has a mark on it. Okay, now that I'm just beveling the soap, I want to tell you what I learned during this batch. The first thing is, even though you have a plan, be willing to stop short. I had another plan to go and do a different swirl going in the other direction, but a previous soap that I made that still was fresh in my mind, I did a bunch of gorgeous swirls, and then I combed through it in two different directions, and it just ruined it, in my opinion. So I just looked at this batch and looked at it and decided, no, this is it. I'm going to stop short. I tend to over swirl my soap, so lately I've been trying really hard not to go too far with things. So that's a good tip for you. If you just have a gut feeling that this is as good as it's going to get, it's probably a good time to stop with your swirling. I was thinking about the fragrances that decelerate, and of course the one I used here I like to use is Green Irish Tweed from Elements Bath & Body. There's also Black Tie that's one of my go-tos, and that is from Wholesale Supplies Plus. And then Citrus is a degreaser. A lot of times the citrus essential oils don't come through in the final product, but the fragrance oils, there's a lot of them that I find that are decelerating. One is Pink Grapefruit from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Another one is Yuzu from Elements Bath & Body. Body, and then there's energy from Brambleberry and those are some of my go-to ones. The size of these bars came out really neat too and I think I'm going to attempt to do something like that for a future video. Can it be translated into a full size bar and will the drag go all the way to the bottom? That's what I'm worried about but I'm going to see if I can do it. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I have a new one coming out. I already know what I'm doing next. I've already made the soap. I just need to edit the video. It's gorgeous, and so stay tuned. It's another one using this 9-bar slab mold. If you want to be notified next time I post a video, just make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell for notifications. And if you like this video and want more like it, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.